In this video, we're going to talk about demo simulations. I've attempted to record an all-encompassing tutorial on simulations in the all-new Adobe Captivate a number of times today, and I think it's just too big of a topic to make into a short, concise video. So I've decided to break it up into sections. For this first uh, tutorial, we're going to talk about demo simulations. Demo simulations are just the type of simulation where I show you how to perform a task, either with some software installed on my computer or perhaps a web application. In the case of demo simulation, what's happening is that you have a virtual mouse that's performing the tasks for you of clicking the different buttons and fields and so on. And then there's going to be a simulated typing text effect that'll get added when you fill out any fields. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm on the Adobe Captivate welcome screen here. And of course, you're probably used to clicking on new project, but in this case, we're going to do a new simulation. I'm gonna have a separate video that talks about setting up all the different preferences for Adobe Captivate, but you know, when it comes to simulations, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on building a demo simulation here. Now there's several ways that you can record simulation. There's of course full screen capture. And as the name suggests, it would capture my whole window that you see in front of you here. The alternative would be to select a custom size where you can actually grab this and position it and even resize it to capture a certain portion of your full screen. But what I prefer is the application window. And if I select application window, I can then of course select the application that I wish to capture. So in this example, I'm gonna use Google Chrome because I have the Expedia website here. No endorsement, just happens to be what I've chosen to use. And we're gonna teach people how to search for a particular flight that they might be uh, trying to book for business travel or something to that effect. Now, the one cool part about this feature is that I don't really want to capture Google Chrome. I want to capture the website. So I can uh, actually select um, an application region from down here and just select the web page. And this is true for other applications as well. So if you had an application that had multiple parts to it, you could actually capture just one of those sub windows or sub panels or whatever. But in this case here, I'm just going to select the web page and that's all that's going to get captured. I'm not going to use any narration because I prefer to add narration once I've recorded the simulation and during the edit phase. And I'm not going to allow automatic panning. I want to stay within this window. So I'm going to turn off panning. And for this example, we are just doing a demo. In future videos, I will talk about training and assessment. So let's go ahead and press the record button. Now you'll see this three, two, one countdown. No stress, because we're not recording any audio, I can take my time and be very meticulous about the steps that I'm going to perform. And actually I recommend that because when you are capturing very precise steps, especially if it's, you know, approved procedures that you want to follow, you know, take your time, make sure you get it right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the going to field. Now you'll hear that camera click sound. That means you've captured a screenshot here. Now I'm going to type in where I'm going to be going to. So in this case here, let's say New York City. And we'll select that from the search results. And in this case, I'm choosing these dates and two travelers. And we're going to click on search. Okay, so we're done here. I can press the end key to end the recording part. Now what you're going to end up with is an Adobe Captivate project file and it's going to be labeled untitled underscore demo 
one or possibly two or three. The numbering is there just to maintain uniqueness of the uh, project file's name. Let's, of course, uh, close this browser window here, and I will expand this window so we can see the full project here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the actual slides that have been captured and make sure that everything is there that I need for this particular simulation here. So I can see the first action is the mouse going over and clicking on the going to field. It's also helpful, by the way, to open up the timeline and see what you've got going on and when it's going to happen on the timeline as well. Let's look at slide number two. So here we're doing the typing. There's also a mouse on this area here, which is fine. You don't need to worry about the mouse. And in this slide here, we are selecting New York. And here we're going over to search. And then we have a final slide with our search results. Okay, so let's start off with the instructions. I'm gonna move this instruction somewhere roughly in the middle here. And I'm going to write instructions that the learner can read and we'll also add some narration in a little bit as well. So here I'm going to write click on the going to field and something I like to do. It's a best practice. I'm going to select the going word and the to word and just bold those. So it really emphasizes this is where we're going. Um, and that looks good to me. Now we'll go over here. Now, anytime you have typing text, I've noticed instructions don't appear automatically. But just like components on blocks on traditional Captivate slides, you can add instructions to any slide you wish. So I'm going to add the instructions here. And these instructions will be to type in your destination in the going to field. In this case, use New York. Okay, so I'm going to again bold going to and New York. So it's clear what we're asking for here. On this slide, we're selecting New York from the search results. So we'll tell them to select New York from the search results. And I think I just need to bold New York here, which is fine. Now let's go here and we'll move this instruction. Click on search and we'll bold search. Okay, that looks nice. Now on the final slide, we have our re search results and the, the user would do whatever they want to do. What you can do here is maybe include um, instructions but really not necessarily use them as instructions. We could just have a message that says, congratulations, congratulations. You have successfully searched for a hotel in New York. I thought I was looking for a flight, but I guess I'm looking for a hotel. Uh, and we'll just maybe bold out New York there. And we could maybe have some fun here with this. Let's do something like this. Make it a little bit more substantial there. That looks good. Let's go back to slide one. And what we're going to do is add some audio to this slide and subsequent slides that matches the text that you see on your screen here. So I'm going to click outside of the slide to make sure I don't have any components selected. And I'm going to click on the audio icon on the right hand toolbar. This will open up my audio inspector and I can import audio. In this case, I'm going to choose system and navigate to where I have some audio files already created. I'll choose CZ1 for slide one. And of course, if I expand the simulation slide swim lane, you'll see it there. Let's do the same thing for slide number two. We'll import system audio number two. And you might see this from time to time. If your audio clip is longer than your slide, it's going to ask you to extend the time. I don't know why you wouldn't choose that, but we'll go ahead and press that now. And we'll do number three, import from the system, number three, 
and number four. And then our final congratulations slide, we'll choose number five there. And we have to extend the time as well. So that's fine. Um, let's go back to the beginning here. And at this point, I think it would be useful to preview. Really, all we've done is put in our instructions and added the audio. So let's preview it and see how it runs. Click on the Going to Field. Type in your destination in the Going to Field. In this case, use New York. Select New York from the search results. Click on Search. Congratulations! You have successfully searched for a hotel in New York. Okay, so I don't know how natural the pacing is or how human it sounds, but I think we can do a little bit better with some best practices here. So starting with slide one, let's take a look at what's going on here. If I was demonstrating this for someone who was in a, an instructor-led situation, I would probably pause before I started to speak. So one of the first things you can do is you can select about the half second mark here on your timeline, right click on the audio clip and select start audio from that playhead position. Now you'll see that the audio is playing the same time the mouse movement is occurring. I'm a fan of making sure that the mouse doesn't start until we've explained what's about to happen. Over here, we've got the uh, typing text and we've got the audio for that as well. So same thing, I'm gonna select the half second mark and make sure the audio doesn't start until that point. And in this case here, we're gonna move the typing text again after the narration. There is actually no reason to have a mouse on this slide. So I'm actually gonna delete it. I don't think it matters that you won't see it for a few moments, but it's more important that this sort of happens naturally. Let's take a look at slide three. We're moving down and selecting New York. Again, let's set it up so that the audio has a bit of a break before it starts. And let's move our mouse down here. Now I noticed it seemed very slow. It's only covering a short distance. You can speed it up by shortening the mouse itself. So let's do that and just seem, it might seem a little snappier at that point. Over here, uh, kind of the same idea. We've got, you know, a very long slide, relatively speaking, for such short uh, narration here. And I think we can just move across the screen a little bit faster. I'm just gonna pick the same amount of time that the, the narration takes. And uh, I can press Control E to extend any object to the end of the slide. So I think that works well. And um, we don't need the mouse here on this slide, so I can delete that. I heard it click, do the mouse click sound. So in this case here, I'm just gonna do the same thing as before. Right click, start audio from playhead position. And I think we'll have a much better result. Let's go back to slide one and preview this see how it looks. Click on the going to field. Type in your destination in the going to field. In this case, use New York. Select New York from the search results. Click on search. Congratulations, you have successfully searched for a hotel in New York. So I think you'll find the pacing is a lot better there. Another thing I noticed as we ran this preview, uh, we had the play bar down at the bottom there. You can have that. I sort of think it's not needed for a demo simulation. So if you wanted to turn off the play bar, just as a final note in this video, go into the TOC and play bar controls, go over to play bar and just turn off the play bar entirely. And I think that overall gives you a much better result. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com.
and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.